God. Hallelujah. So this morning, I am going to be sharing with you on the topic, uh, The World Needs You. The world needs you. I want you to say that. Repeat after me. The world needs me. Put that in the chat. The world needs me. And so while I was thinking this morning, what do I share? And that just came to my spirit. The world needs you. Praise God. Let's open up in prayer. Father, we thank you for a beautiful day. We thank you for another day on the plug. Mighty God, we know that we could not be here had it not been for you. Had it not been for your grace and your protection, Lord. That there is a reason why we are alive this morning. And so, Father, we come, Lord God, in divine alignment with that reason. Mighty God, we humble ourselves, Lord God, before you this morning. And we ask you, Lord, to lead us by your spirit. We ask you to have your way this morning, God. I pray that you will anoint this word that will come forth, Lord God. And I pray, mighty God, that it will touch the souls of your people. And it will activate us into our purpose and into our calling, mighty God. I pray, Lord God, that lives will be transformed from this day onward. In Jesus' name, amen and amen amen i promise you people of god go and listen to this song i am enough by victoria tunde all right you will absolutely love it because sometimes we do not feel as if we are enough but you are enough and the world needs you you know we in this time might struggle with what is called the what I'm calling it the insignificant complex, right? We feel like we are insignificant. We feel like we are not enough. We feel like, you know, there is really no place for us in this world. And we sit and we, we just sit there comparing ourselves to everyone around us. And then when we really need to do what we need to do, we actually don't do it. We find excuses not to do what God has asked us to do. And I, as I say all the time, I'm sharing this from my own personal experience where I will find a million reasons why I'm not the right person to do anything at all. And I will sit there and I will think that, okay, you know, I'm made for more. If you can identify with these thoughts, you see, sit and you look at your life and you're wondering to yourself is this really what god placed me on this earth for am i really just here to you know go to school to get a job to pay the bills and go day after day doing the same thing over and over and then just die is that really why i am here but inside of you, you feel that desire for more. You feel that desire, that pull that is suggesting that there is more to it. There is more to you than what meets the eye. But when you think about all the things that you have to do to get there, you're going to have to get a little uncomfortable. You're going to have to stand in front of some people. You're going to have to sit in front of a camera. You're going to have to do a little bit more than what you are doing. You start to convince yourself that this is the best way for you this is the best thing for you and so you shrink back into your shell and you are here stuck in between these two places where you feel okay i'm not enough to do the things that i feel like doing but then here you are in the position you're in and you're not comfortable because you feel like there is more to you than what meets the eyes and so you're stuck in the middle not knowing what to do with yourself but the lord is saying this morning that the world needs you to be you the world needs you to come out of your comfort zone the world needs you to start sharing and being the best version of yourself getting out of your box right getting out of your comfort zone that is 
important now the character in the bible it's been a while since i've you know really gotten deep into stories in the bible right but the character in the bible that i was thinking about this morning or last night i don't know um his name is moses now we all know the story of moses right we learned that in sunday school and sabbath school we were there and we know that you know um all the israelites were going to be killed the boys and his mother just put him in a little basket and put him in the in the river or the brooks and pharaoh's daughter came to, to bath and she saw him and she took him and she raised him right she hired his mother to raise him and he grew up in the palace he grew up as a prince he grew up top of the top right and I remember in the story of Moses that he saw the injustice against his people because of course his mother raised him to know that you are a Jew right and so he saw the injustice against his people and even though he had a better life and this is for someone even though he had a better life there were certain privileges that he had in the position that he was in he was not comfortable knowing that the people around him were not in a similar position he was not comfortable knowing that the people around him were living a life of torment a life of pain and a life of hurt and so he was unsettled in himself right his desire was to help his people break free from the bondage that they were in so that they too could enjoy a life of freedom the life of freedom that he was enjoying joy what am i assinuating i'm saying people of god that you are living a certain kind of life a certain quality of life now it might not be all the way up there but it's comfortable right and there are people around you who are not yet at the level that you are and a little part of you yes you are happy that you got out of their situation but a part of you is feeling like i need to do more for these people i need to show sister felicia that this is what i did to get from where she is is to where I am I feel like I am called to pull her to another level I feel like I'm called to pull sister Samantha to another level because I know how to get from where she is to where I am but the question starts to come into your head oh my god will they accept my help Oh, I see, you know, I see Sister Felicia with Sister Samantha. Maybe, maybe she doesn't really need me. Maybe she, she, you know, she, you know, and all of these thoughts starts coming into your head and you're thinking, well, who am I? You know, you start to, to think about all the things that you are not. And then you start to say, well, who am I to even say anything? right moving ahead of myself so continuing the story of moses now moses wanted to help so badly that he went about it the wrong way he saw the egyptians mistreating right the the hebrews and he killed the egyptian and in a bit to you know cover it up he buried them right but he didn't even know that he was seen he he had the right intention but he took the wrong action. He had the right intention, but he took the wrong action. And that ended up messing things up for him. Well, in his eyes, right? And he had to run away. But in him running away, he got to the place where God wanted him to be, where God stripped him of everything that, you know, was not needed for the, the place that God was taking him. Praise God. Sometimes we have the right intention. You may have done something in your life. You had the right intention, but you took the wrong course 
course of action, right? And you try to cover it up. You try to fix it. You try to mend it. But it seemed like instead of mending it, you made it a lot worse. And when you thought no one saw what you did, you hear people chattering about what you did. That's what happened when Moses saw the two um, Hebrew people fighting and he went there telling them, hey, no need to fight. They turned to him and they said, oh, are you going to kill us the way you killed that Egyptian, right? And so here you are trying to help a situation and someone knew about the thing that you thought you hid and they bring it to your face and they're like, oh, are you going to do this or are you going to do that? And they throw it back in your face. And so you pull away, you get into your shell, you get into your circle. And that's probably why you are here in this place of comfort. But in Moses' heart, he knew that he was called for something greater. But he ran away. He ran away for his dear life. He ran away because he just could not face it anymore. He just didn't want to deal with it anymore. Many of us are in that place, praise God, where we have run away from the purpose that we feel in our hearts, from the call that we feel, the pull that we feel because of our track record, praise God. When we look and see the things that we have done, the things that we have done in secret, the things that we have done that people know about, we think that, oh, I am no longer qualified to do anything for God. I'm no longer qualified to help anyone because they already know, hallelujah, what I have done. And so Moses, he went away into a far place, praise God. But while he was there and he was building certain character characteristics that God wanted him to have, praise God, he went out there and he was shepherding, praise God. That's what God wanted from him. God wanted that leadership quality, that shepherding quality of protection and guidance, praise God. The place in your life where you are now, the place that seemed to be a wilderness, the place place that seems to be where you are trapped. You are there because God is working out some kinks out of you. He is working in some character into you, hallelujah, that he need to take you, hallelujah, to the place where you need to be because your purpose is knocking. Destiny is calling, hallelujah, and you are there because all of the things that you have experienced and you are experiencing is taking you, is building in you the character that you need, that character of leadership, that lifestyle of prayer, that really just praying that you need to do, that season of fasting that you need, hallelujah, that is preparing you for what God has called you for. You might sit there and you might be thinking that everything has fallen apart, but for God, everything has fallen into place. Everything has fallen into purpose. Hallelujah. That's it exactly where God wanted you to be because you had a little attitude, hallelujah, that God didn't quite like. You had a little, um, a little pompous thing about you where you sing so beautiful and everybody say, oh, you have a beautiful voice and you're like, oh, thank you. It's all from the hours of practice in the shower and all of that. Not saying that anything is wrong with practicing in the shower, but you are forgetting to give glory to whom glory belong. And so God got you to that place where now you are feeling like, wow, it's all God. And people say something to you and you're like, no, 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 that's all God right there. Hallelujah. That's where God wants you to be where you know and you acknowledge that he is the one that deserves all the glory that yes you are enough through Christ who strengthens you you are enough because he is enough that's the place that God wants you to be and so God stripped Moses of everything that identified him with Pharaoh with the palace. He was stripped of it all. And when he got to that place, that mellow sweet place, because remember, you know, Moses was a hothead. He was a hothead. You can see that he was a hothead because what? He killed the Egyptian. And when you read on about the Israelites, you realize that the people that he was going to lead, he needed to get rid of that anger, that, that, that temper. God needed to take it down. 
There is something. There is something that God is working on. <clears throat> He's probably working on your patience. He's probably working on your humility. You can identify what God is working on in you, where you are right now. He's working on it. God was working on Moses. Moses was just there thinking maybe that his whole life is done. Yes, he found his wife, but you know, all of the things that he was used to was no longer there. And so he probably thought that everything was out of place. He probably felt like his life was over. Wow, I'm coming from the palace and look at me in the wilderness. You probably were in a high-end job. And then you lost that job. And there you are starting all over again at the bottom at what you probably consider to be just menial labor. And you're wondering what's going on. You probably had to move out of your three bedroom home. And here you are in just this one bedroom and you're wondering what's going on. You probably used to be the worship leader or the lead singer in the choir. And now here you are not even being allowed to minister at all or whatever situation you find yourself in. And you are wondering, God, why am I here? How did I even get here but God this is not what you showed me you showed me in a position of leadership you showed me me myself in this position and I was there I was so close to it I could almost taste it but look at me now what's going on in my life God is preparing you he's working out the kinks and he's building the character in you that he needs he needs a character because when you step out into the fullness of who you are, the world, the world is going to receive you. And not everybody in the world. Like just not, when I say the world needs you, let me just clarify. Because there are people who you are not called to. And those people are going to, it's like you are going to be their assignment to assassinate your character and, and, to, and to just make your life hard and just make your life miserable. Those are not the people that I'm talking about. I'm talking about the people who will say to you, boy, you know, Sister Cynthia, like I really needed you. I really needed to hear what you had to say. Sis, I'm so grateful for you. I thank God every day for you. Sister Olivia, I thank God every day for you. That word of encouragement that you gave me, I needed to hear that. Those people are waiting for you. They're just waiting to hear what you have to say. They're waiting to hear your testimony. They're waiting to hear that word that God placed in your heart. They're waiting for you to become who God has called you to be. The world needs you. And so when the fullness of time came and God decided, okay, Moses is ready. He called Moses. At this point, the Moses that was raised as a leader started to find every reason every excuse why he could not lead moses who had that deep desire in his heart to free his people from oppression why did he have that desire because that was his purpose i put to you people of god that that desire that you feel inside of you that desire to help at whatever level you feel like you want to help I, I believe that's a part of your purpose. But it but just might not manifest in the timing, one, in the timing that you expected it to or in the way that you are expecting it to. Because Moses probably thought that at that time, he was the boss, right? He was the it thing. He had the privilege. He had whatever it took right? To free those people there and then. But that's not how God wanted it. God wanted it to be done his way. So that feeling that you have to help, God wants it to be done in his 
way. And so that's why you have been going through your wilderness experience that you have been going through so that God can prepare you to do it the way that he wants it to be done, the way that will bring the most glory to him. Because really and truly, sometimes if we're not careful, we kind of steal a little glory here and there from God, right? And God is like, mm -mm, my glory, I share with no one. So I see you have a little sticky finger here wanting to steal my glory. So let me go and put you here so that I can clean off that sticky finger so that when you come back to this position or a greater position, you will not try to steal what belongs to me. Praise God. So that's pretty much the story that, that came to my thoughts about Moses and you know how the world needed him. The world needed him, but he didn't even realize it. He didn't even realize the magnitude of the need in the world for him at the time when God brought him forth. And you probably don't realize the magnitude of the need that is out there for you, for your voice. I say this all the time and I need it. I need it to, to ring in your head like every time something, another thought comes to you. I want you to always remember these words flowing through your head. There is someone connected to your voice. There is someone that is out there that will not hear me. I will say the exact same thing that you are saying and it will not connect to them the way that what you say connects there are people waiting for you felicia people waiting for you sister olivia you sister samantha you sister patricia you sister cynthia and everyone else that is on here waiting specifically for you people will say why are there so many pastors out there now let me ask you a question do you listen to all of them you probably listen to one person, like there's one particular um, minister that my friend, she absolutely loves. And for the life of me, I just cannot listen to that minister. Like, I just cannot. There is literally no connection. Is she a great minister? She is amazing and she does amazing things for the kingdom of God, but she doesn't connect with me. But she connects with my friend. So imagine if she just gets up and says, oh, I don't connect with Shani, so I'm not going to do anything. So what about my friend and all the other people out there that she connects to? And then who connects with me doesn't connect with my friend. There is space for everyone. There is someone assigned to everyone's voice. And the fact that you are here, not just here on the plug, but here on this earth, means that there is purpose that you need to accomplish in this earth. If you were not needed in the earth, God would have taken you to heaven the moment you got saved because there would have been no purpose for you here. But you are here today because the world needs you. And the feeling, that desire that you have in your heart to help those people. I know that Lady Teresa, she, 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 she's all about the moms because the moms need her. And when in the beginning, because I, I know a bit of her story, praise God, you know, she, she felt like she was inferior. She felt like she was a failure. She felt like she was a mess. But she had the desire to help other moms. And so God pruned her and prepared her. And now guess what? She now has the ministry ministering to moms. Those moms that she ministered to, they need to hear her voice. They needed her to become who God wanted her to be. It's all in the becoming of who God wants you to be. There are others of you on here with similar story that I do not know. But people need to know. People need to know and you have that desire because that's where God is taking you because those are the people that God wants you to free. Moses had the desire to free the Israelites and it may have taken him 40 years beyond what he thought but that desire was a God's desire. God just needed to prepare him. The desire that you have to help 
to build the kingdom of God. It's a God's desire. But he is just preparing you. He's preparing you to bring forth that purpose. To accomplish that desire that he placed in your heart. So never forget that the world needs you. The voices, the people who have been assigned to you. They need you to become. They need you to walk in your identity. You are enough. Christ in you makes you enough. Hallelujah. I just thank God for this word this morning, for this great reminder that we are enough because everything in society is trying to tell us otherwise. But the, the good thing, and you know, one thing that the Holy Spirit taught me is that we live by the word of God. We live by the truth of God. We don't live by how we feel. You feel like you are not enough? Well, too bad. That's not what you live by. You live by the word of God. I remember I was in a situation and I and I and I said, you know, Lord, but I don't feel like this is working. And the Lord said, um, you don't live by feelings. You live by my word. And if my word says this is what it is, then whether you feel it or not, this is what it is. And it will manifest as what it is in due season. But for now, you believe my word. Praise God. And so we are not what the world tells us that we are. We are who God tells us that we are. Okay? Whether you feel like it or not, it's the word of God. And his word is truth. His word is the final authority. And so your feeling has to get in line. And so if you, I'm sharing this morning with you because I have similar struggles. You are enough. You are enough. And the world needs you. Every single one of you watching live who will catch the replay, who will watch this on any other platform that it ends up on. You are are enough and the world needs you to do you i heard lisa nichols says if you don't do you then you will never be done no one else will do you no one else will be you if you don't be you then you will never be <laughs> if you don't do you then you will never be done amen Amen. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Let us just seal this word with a prayer. Father, we thank you for this word this morning. We thank you for your reminder that we are enough. We thank you for the reminder that the world needs us. And the fact that we are still here this morning, here on earth, means that we still have a purpose to accomplish. And so, Lord, we pray that you will help us to walk in the truth that we are enough, that we will not allow the lies of the enemy enemy the lies of this world to convince us otherwise that we will not walk in the shadow of who you have called us to be but we will become and walk in the full essence of who you have called us to be mighty God so that the world mighty God will know that you are God Lord we will lift you up from this earth hallelujah so that you can draw all men unto you we will let our lights shine so that men may see our works and come to glorify you, our Father who art in heaven. Lord, have your way in our lives this morning. Bless the plug. Bless everyone that tune in and that tunes in day after day, all our new viewers. Lord, I pray that you will bless this ministry, every woman that minister on here. Bless Pastor Monica, who leads us, mighty God. I pray that you will strengthen her and continue to give her vision and insights. Lord, and I pray, Lord God, for Lady Theresa, who has her procedure that she will be doing. God, I pray that you will cover her and I pray for complete healing. Mighty God, I pray for provision for your people this morning and that, Lord, you will be glorified in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen.